Yeah. Yeah, hey everyone, uh, I'm, I'm Dexter and I'm like gonna be year two at Singapore Poly and yeah, so today I'll be talking about scraping server side rendered React apps. So like how many of you here know what server side rendered React apps are? Like Okay. Okay. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> so like when you're not server side rendering, you're client side rendering. So what, what client side rendering is with React is just you're sending your React code over and your HTML is like blank. And once your like React loads, which what a React render is is just a function that takes like a state and then spits out HTML. So th that's what you do with client side rendering on your browser itself. Then after that you have to like make an API call or something uh, to fetch your data. So the time until a user sees like the actual like data display on the screen takes some time. Uh. And also it's like not HTML, not SEO friendly. So certain like certain like I think search engines like Bing or <laughs> Yahoo, they, they probably don't look at your JavaScript. So yeah, it's probably not that friendly for SEOs. And what server side rendering is, is you, you do the rendering on the server side. So you just take, you, you, take some, you put in some state into your React and then spits out HTML on your server side and then you just send it over. And, but on your client, of course, you, you continue to use um, API calls for subsequent updates to your React on your client. And yeah. Uh, so like last Saturday, I just spent a few hours building like a Telegram bot that like allows you to listen in on some like uh, listings on Carousel, like based on certain keywords. So you can listen to iPhone, and then every minute it posts Carousel and tells you all the new listings. So just let me show you. Yeah. So, wait, can you guys see? How do you make it larger? Uh, you know my, so, so if you like enter some commands like slash listen to iPhone, you can see like you're you, yeah, subscribed to the keyword and you get alerted of all the listings on Carousel. So, so this is like the initial 40 and every minute you'll get all the new listings. You don't get like 40 every single time. Uh. So yeah. Hey, Julius. <laughs> uh, so like the, the goals I went into this like project, I, I didn't want to scrape HTML because like, first of all, it's like fragile. It's y y like A-B testing, so just like UI updates, you just break it. And also it's been done before, so it's pretty boring. And yeah, yeah. So it should be ideally replicable. So all the code I need to get from some HTML file into something I can work with, like a Python dictionary. Should I should be able to use the code uh, for different websites that I want to scrape. And yeah. So as you can see, like HTML, they they, they like webpack or whatever, they, they actually turn your C class names into some obscure thing that that yeah that yeah that's not nice. Because to save space I guess. And yeah. Um, so what I did was I went on Carousel. Then, okay. uh, I, I searched for like some keyword. Then, and then I inspected element. So I just searched for some like product listing title over here. So like this one, I guess. Let's just search for it. Duotron Ultra Battery. <laughs> Let me zoom in. 
So yeah, as you can see, this is the HTML. And yeah, so this is the product listing in the product itself from your search in HTML. So if you keep on going down, right? What, eh? Wait, what? What's going on? Wait, never mind. Wait, let me try something else. Uh, I think Carousel, they updated the shit to break. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I, I, think they, I, I think they really did it. <laughs> oh yeah, I actually have a more. <laughs> okay, let's just search uh, pre-order 3D something. This is very weird. Okay, I actually have no idea why, but uh, okay. I think something to do with the search, I guess. Oh shit! Wait, where does my bot work? <laughs> uh, yeah. Hold on. Very interesting. I don't know why. Wait. Okay. Yeah, I'll just like paste. I'll just use Postman. Then I'll I'll get the HTML. I'll paste it in my Sublime or something. Yeah. So okay. So I just search for some like listing over here. Right. Uh, Pre-order. Yeah. So as you can see, right, it's like all of a sudden I saw I saw this like bunch of stuff over here that isn't HTML. So you know, I just scrolled up. Then I saw like. Where it belong to? Um, no. Probably keep going. Uh, see where is it? Okay, yeah, yeah. So, um, so as you can see, right, there's this script tag over here, and the what? Our listing appears to be somewhere inside here. So the script tag is just JavaScript code and appears like a JavaScript object is being assigned to this like window dot app uh, thing. So I I initially I didn't know what this was, so I went and like Google around and turns out it's if you like go on like Redux and look for the server side rendering thing. So what, what they do when you what you do when you want to server side render is you provide like you provide your preload state. You have this preload state here, and then you put in some uh, JavaScript object here that represents your state on your client. And the reason you need to do this is because um, so like when you render on your server side, you you go from like an initial state into some new state because you have to fetch data, you have to, your Redux has to dispatch actions. And so you reach this new state. And you, want, you can't just send your HTML over to your client because you, you ideally you want them to continue off with the whatever Redux state they had previously. So yeah, you have to include this, which represents the state of the Redux that is being pre-rendered. So, so Redux can take over on the client side. And yeah, so my next thought was like, why not just pass this to get what I want? And yeah, that's what I did. So, oh yeah, Carousel use, doesn't use Redux for some reason. They use like Fluxible. I don't know, it's like some Yahoo 
library, which we all know for their engineering. And <laughs> uh, yeah, so you can just pass it. Uh, and so if you like, let me try and format this into something that we can see, so you can see the structure of this object. So, uh, yeah, um, I have this plugin that like allows you to validate um, the, actually let me see if you can zoom in, actually, apparently not. So I have this plugin that allows you to validate JSON. So if I check if it's valid JSON and it's not, because this is actual JavaScript code, this is not JSON. And you can think of JSON as like a subset of a JavaScript object in some ways, because there's certain restri restrictions like you can't store functions as values, you can't, you can't have trailing commas, and you have to have like quotes around your keys around the object keys. And the, the reason it's not valid here is, is because of this, this one thing, which is a function over here. I don't know if you can see this. This is pretty obvious. Huh? And yeah, so JSON, you can't have that. So when you try and pass this, it's because it's not valid JSON, you're going to get some error. So let's just remove this. Like, you can't do this in our code, by the way. We can't just like remove the function whenever we feel like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is validated. Yeah, so it's valid. So we can just format it and let's see where our data actually is. Oh. Uh, okay. Excellent condition iPhone. <laughs> okay. Condition. Yeah, so you can see it belongs to this object over here. And if you scroll up, uh, let's see where this belongs to. You actually see a lot of information about this. Like, I think you can know whether it's like promoted or whatever, like the likes and who it belongs to. Yeah, so this ob object over here, this. So this is the ID of the object and it maps to the actual product itself. So this. So there's the product ID that maps to the product, yeah. And let's see where this um, belongs to. Like, what what is this parent? So there's like forty listings at most. So I have to keep scrolling. Oh. Where is it? Uh, let's find this again. What? Oh, yeah. Um, so, eh, where is it? Yeah, so as you can see, right, it belongs, so all your, that, that product ID to product map, it belongs to this key called products map. And the reason it's not an array is because it, it actually, if you see, wait, where is it? Uh, if you look over here, right, you actually get an array of IDs, product IDs. So you can like iterate over it and then you do a lookup and you'll get your, the result of your search. And the reason I guess they do this is because if you actually search for like a not very popular keyword like uh, this, you, you don't just get this like search, right? You also get like this not very relevant stuff and they, they just group them together in one products map. So the And so this thing over here is the actual relevant stuff. And there's probably some other array for the, like you might be interested in uh, products that's not very relevant. Yeah, so we can just pass it, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
and yeah and since it's actual like javascript code right the the, the, the json might not be actually valid so we can we can either like uh pass it as javascript code into an ast uh then, then we can traverse through it but let me just show you the how you can do it so there's this website i just found out like 2 a.m to today yeah explorer.net Yeah, so what you can do is you, um, um, it allows you to just like actually pass JavaScript code and then you can just traverse through it. And, and yeah, but I mean, if you can avoid using like uh, another dependency to pass our JavaScript code, that would be great. Lah. So uh, I think most languages, they come with like a JSON passing Thing, and if you can use that, that would be great. Because like the the entire JSON, the entire state as a whole that we're looking at, it may not be valid uh, JSON, but the but the ones that we, the data that we actually need is uh, completely valid JSON. So products map. So this is valid JSON, and so we should just like look for this and. Yeah, and just slice this out as a string and then pass it. And this is what I did. So as you can see, the code here is just, you find the start index of this uh, products map, and then you find the, the, the index of the opening brace. Then you just find the closing brace, and you slice everything out, and then you just pass as JSON. That's a really easy way to do it. And how do you find like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, um, so yeah, you just use a stack and, and yeah, and basically you terminate when your, when the, the braces are like completely balanced, which is when the length of the stack is zero. And you want to make sure to ab avoid looking at braces when they are inside a string. And yeah, do you all understand the algo, like the stacks one? Hopefully, right? You guys are CS students. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, some like senior engineer at Carousel noticed my project and then he told me to like improve on my algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I if you actually assume that the, the braces already match up, right? You don't have to use like a stack to ensure to like pop and whatever. You can just count the number of opening braces and the number of closing braces. And once they are actually equal, right, you already know that the closing braces, that, that's the index of the clo closing brace. Yeah, and it, it's pretty, like, pretty okay to uh, assume that it's perfectly valid. Um, the, the braces are perfectly matched up because if, if it doesn't match up, your JavaScript won't like, even compile. So yeah, so I should probably refactor my code. Uh, so this is just for like documentation. Like this is pretty. You can find out how to like like just read their uh, networks and then sniff their API and then call call it. But so there's like this, this CSRF token inside the preload state that you can strip off and then just use it to call their API. And here's the endpoint. You should provide your cookie and your content type, which is JSON, and then the payload here. But I, I won't really go into it. So yeah, you can find my project on GitHub. And yeah, do you all have any questions so far? Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> I, didn't, I, I just wanted to use I don't know why I don't have my React Dev Tools. I think it's because I'm on Guess, uh, but oh, it's right there. So yeah, we can just pass this and then like get all the photos. It should be inside here. So let me just open up Postman. Oh, really? Yeah. Where is it? Unfortunately, it's written in this code. Oh, then never mind. <laughs> 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 never mind. <laughs> oh, yeah, they do. Y you have to strip the CSRF and then oh. just call. Yeah. Yeah. So. I guess that's what you do. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's in the slides. Yeah, if you like look at the end, you see like CSRF and all the payload you need. Yeah.
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. So I'll just like try and skip this, I guess. So I, I'm not sure how to like control F for the, the pictures because you know they're pictures. Uh so like I'll just like inspect I'll inspect element and see what's in here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I guess you can't do that. So I'll just like manually look. <laughs> yeah, I just did, but it didn't like expand it for me. Yeah. Wait, what do you mean? Open it again. Yeah. Just click this. Yeah. Go oh, back to that okay. And click that again. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so, okay, so apparently they hash their class names, which is. So that's not very nice. Yeah, probably, you probably don't want to try and script HTML like that. But I think this is the link to the actual image itself. So let me just. Yeah, it is. So it should be somewhere, it should be in my HTML here. So it should be inside the preload state. Uh, and I'll just try it out. Hopefully, it's in there. Shit. <laughs> uh, I think this should be like the, the idea. So I think if you do this, oh yeah. So it's in here. So I'll just try and like, Look at the structure of this JSON or JavaScript object. Uh, so we, I can check if it's valid JSON. And yeah, apparently it is. So yeah, I can like format it. Then, uh, yeah, so here's the image. Then I'll just like scroll up. So it belongs to this key uh, edge owner to timeline media. I think they're probably using GraphQL because there's like edges and node. And yeah, and inside edges, you get your array of, I think, image. So if I look at the second element, uh, the display URL, um, hopefully it should map to the Second image over here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And yeah, it does. So let's just pass this. Uh, uh, so I'll just copy. Instagram bot. Okay, go back. Okay, so let's change the code here to like modify it into something that actually scrapes carousel. No, not carousel, Instagram. Um, wait, so let me just run, run, like, run through the code really quickly. So what I have is a carousel polar, and this kind of like the observable in Java or your event, em event emitter in Node.js. You are able to like attach a listener, and then once it queries carousel, you, you actually get alert, alerts all your listeners. And in your, so, so it's, your querying is supposed to be like a while true loop, and then you, you sleep the thread and for a while. You probably don't want to do that on the main thread because, you know, like you, you probably want to listen for Telegram like commands, so you do it on another thread. And this over here is just a while through loop, uh, and yeah, it queries and then alerts the listeners. And then, in the carousel query class, so all I do I just query carousel then. I, I convert the HTML to a string and then I do the passing that I just now mentioned, which is, yeah. 
And you probably don't want to get all 40 at work. You don't, you don't want to like send all 40 to them. You only want to send the new uh, product since the last time you query. So you have to save the, the, ID, the newest ID of the previous query. And then you just look for it in your new query and you, f you find everything to its left, which is newer than it. But actually, this is like, I think in reverse chronological order. So if you want to be pedantic, you can like find research. Yeah, but yeah. Whatever. <laughs> and yeah. So let's just change this to script carousel. Uh, I'll hard code everything. Okay. Uh, crap. get new products. I won't do like the different thing. So I'll just remove this. Uh, probably don't need this. So I only need just now that array that you guys looked at, the array of photos. So I'll just look for it. Um, uh, so just now, uh, all your photos actually belong to each owner to timeline media. And then inside there, edges, you get your array of pictures. So I'll just look for this. Then so that should work. And since I, the, the array is actually inside edges, I'll just like access edges here. Then in my polar, I should. I shouldn't have to change anything. Uh, then I'll go up here. Okay, so the telegram listener, I'll just remove this. I'll just attach a generic like listener that just prints out the photos. Uh, printing. Then I'll iterate over the photos. Then I'll print the photo. Then I'll just like let the thread sleep for like five seconds. Or so. Uh, yeah, so I'll just remove the the, the diagram bot part, and yeah. And the keyword is really like hard coded in there, so I'll just like put anything here, and I'll add a print the printing listener, and. I'll move this. So hopefully when I run this, I should see the um, everything that's in here. So Python. Oh, damn it. So I did something wrong. Uh, so where's the arrow coming from? has no attribute get new products. Oh, okay. So I removed the get new products thing because I don't need to like do the different thing. So get new products, where is it? Oh yeah. So new products, I can just access it directly in my dot products. So dot products. Then, see I don't need this. So yeah, so I have my image here. I'll just like show the link to the image. Uh, so where's the uh, link to the image? I think it's in display URL just now we saw. Uh, yeah, so display URL is under node. So I'll just like look into node then display URL. I reverse the order so that you get from the oldest to the newest one. So th the first one you see should probably be the, the one at the bottom of the images that you see in Carousel. And let's just remove this. Yeah, so the one over here right, should be the very first image at the top. So this one. 
then yeah. So okay, uh, so as you can see, it's pretty easy to scrape if you like look at the preload state of a React app. And yeah, so that's it. You guys got any questions? Yeah.